Hello and welcome to Cultural Geography. My name is Brian Kraus and I will be your instructor in this class. So I'll be making video lectures to accompany the chapters in your textbook, The Cultural Landscape. The videos will highlight some of the key points in the chapter, but not all of them. It is your responsibility for the material covered in the textbook, as you will be quizzed on this as well. In this video lecture, I broadly introduce what geography is, how a geographer thinks about the cultural and physical landscape. Some of the concepts discussed here will be covered in greater depth in the coming video lectures. So on that note, let's explore geography. So while there are countless definitions as to what the study of geography is, I like this definition as it kind of encapsulates the essence of geography. Geography is the study of patterns and processes of human and environmental landscapes and their interconnections. Deconstructing this definition, we can think of human patterns and processes as cities and how they develop, for example, why is Boise the most populous city in Idaho, or how religions or other cultural beliefs originate and diffuse, to the building of a dam. Human in, are interconnected to earth and help shape the physical earth. The natural environment is thought of as the physical earth and the atmosphere such things as earthquakes, which have distinct patterns, to form the mountains through plate tectonics, to climate and weather. These are just some of the environmental landscapes geographers are interested in. Spatial perspective is an intellectual framework, kind of the way of thinking, that looks at particular phenomena, events, and things like that, and how and why that phenomena is located where it is and how it is spatially related to phenomena in other places. So let's look at homicide rates and there's an example of this spatial perspective. So this is a choropleth map depicting the spatial distribution of homicide rates and it's the rate per 100,000 in the United States by state. A critical component of a geographer's spatial perspective is the ability to observe data in its spatial form and draw logical conclusions from that data. So as a geographer, you might act as a spatial pattern detector. What kind of patterns are happening? You are probably already doing this. You're identifying states that have high and low homicide rates. Are there any geographic patterns that you see in this map? So if we go back to our definition of spatial perspective, that it is a way of thinking that looks at a particular phenomena, in this case, homicide rates by state, how and why is homicide rate or homicide located where it is and how is it spatially related to phenomena in other states? From this map, we can see a spatial pattern. So what are some possible explanations to this spatial pattern? Why does the southern region have some of the highest homicides rates? Louisiana has a rate of 11.7 homicides per 100,000 followed by Mississippi at 11.4 and Alabama at 8.1. So why are homicide rates so high here? Researchers continue to debate about the factors responsible for regional variations in homicide crime level, such as culture, race, poverty, gun ownership, and age structure, just to mention a few. So what are some of the potential consequences of this spatial distribution? In this incident, states, perhaps with higher murder rates, may need to spend more funds on law enforcement. Higher murder rates might also result in negative publicity that may influence the area's tourism or convention industry. It might even affect the flow of migration or businesses and economic activities in and out of that area. So to reiterate, geographers seek to understand what is where, why it's there, and how they develop and change over time. That's the key for geography, what, where, and why. So let's look at another example um, of this example of spatial thinking, spatial questioning. So the question, what is where, refers to the physical aspect of geography. In this example, the what is the question referring to the population distribution in Egypt. So looking at this image, we can see that the majority of Egypt's population, a little over 93 million, live along the Nile River, which is indicated by these bright lights. So why is 
the question, why is it there, kind of leads towards the human aspect of geography. Most of the people live along the Nile River because of its source of water. Without water, life could not exist. Which answers, why is it there? So how developed and change over time is illustrated by shipping goods is relatively easy to transport items and an even better way to money, make money. So here is a satellite image of Egypt and we can clearly see that the Nile is the lifeline of the region. Only a few miles to either side is barren desert. So to reiterate, the what, where, and why is clearly is illustrated here with that being the location or the population density of Egypt and why it's located there is due to the fresh water source of the Nile River. So geography, unlike most other disciplines, is not defined by one particular topic. Instead, we are just discussed with a, the um, homicide rates and the population distribution of Egypt Geography is concerned with many different topics, from people, culture, politics, settlements, plants, landforms, and much more. Most likely, none of these topics will be studied in isolation, because there's this interaction or interdependency between them. We saw this in the, the homicide rate example, whether it's culture or not. Because geography is such a diverse subject matter, is traditionally divided into two main groups. So because geography is so broad, the discipline, as I said, is in two main groups, or two branches, physical geography and human geography. Each of these branches could be further divided into subspecialties, but we'll kind of not discuss those here and we'll stick to these two main branches. So physical geography is the natural environment. It is the primary concern of physical geographers. Though many physical geographers look at how humans have altered the natural system, physical geographers study the Earth's seasons, climate, atmosphere, soil, streams, landforms, oceans. And CWI offers a physical geography course called Geog 100. Human geography Human geography is concerned with the distribution and networks of people and cultures on the Earth's surface. In other words, focuses on the built environment and how humans create, view, manage, and influence space. So a human geographer might investigate the local, the regional, and global impacts of rising economic powers of China and India. Human geographers also study how people use and alter their environments. When, for example, people allow their animals to overgraze a region, the soil erodes and grassland is transformed into desert. So geographers use many tools and techniques in their work. And the geographic technologies are increasingly common among the most important emerging fields of understanding this complex world. So, for example, geographic information systems, remote sensing, global positioning systems, online mapping. These all employ the spatial perspective to problem solving. And at CWI we offer several ge geographic information system classes, um, Geology 126 and Geology 226. We also offer a global positioning system course, uh, 155. So we all live in our lives geographically. Planet Earth is our home. It is awesome, diverse, inspiring, and ever-changing. So studying geography invites us to participate more fully in the excitement, the enjoyment, and the challenges of this dynamic world. It draws on personal experience to help us better understand the places we live in, why they matter, and how they are connected to a globalized world. Geographers draw from across the physical, cultural, economic, and political sphere, as we just discussed, to illuminate key issues from the present and the future, explore at all scales from the personal to the local and the global. Through geography, we learn to appreciate the diversity of landscapes, people, and cultures. Geography is therefore a vital subject resource for the 21st century global citizen. 
enabling us to face questions of what is it means to live sustainably in an interdependent world. Geography helps us investigate and to think critically and creatively about the complexities of place and different views and feelings related to place. Geography is a study through inquiry. This requires the formulation of effective questions. The subject helps develop significant elements of skill, skills framework with a strong emphasis on utilizing maps and visual images, as well as new technologies, including GIS. These transferable geographic skills help equip us for a lifelong process of learning. So geographers seek to understand where things are found and why they are present in those locations. How things are located in the same or distant places influences one another over time, and why places and people who live in them develop and change in particular ways. Raising these questions is at the heart of the geographic perspective. A geographic perspective is a way of looking at and understanding the world. When you view the world through the lens of geography, you will solve problems that ask the questions. So, geography asks spatial questions. Where are things located on Earth? How places differ from one another? How people interact with the environment? And why are they located where they are? These are the kind of questions that are at the heart of geography. In other words, it means that you are analyzing something within its spatial, historical, cultural, political, and physical context. You can study anything that has some spatial component to it from this perspective. All things, whether they are rivers, cities, populations of people, or events, exist in a particular place and in a particular time for a set of specific reasons. So geography opens the door to a wide variety of careers, such as environmental specialists, business location, allocation experts, market researchers, community development and planning specialists, cartographers, satellite imagery analysis, weather forecasters, and teachers. In fact, almost any career would benefit better from understanding of geography.